Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast. Today I'm going to be reviewing a muzzle car and also presenting a new manufacturer for the first time on my channel. This is a 1972 Ford Torino, that is to say Grand Torino Hardtop Coupe in 143 scale by Premium X. So here's what the model looks like inside its box. As you can see, this is a Premium X diecast box. Up here, we've got the Premium X logo as well. And here at the front, we have another window. At the back, it's pretty plain. And then down here, it says exact scale model for adult collector, not suitable for children under 14 years old. And of course, long-term exposure to direct sunlight or bright spotlight will cause damage. Funny, it says spoilite. I guess the Chinese can't spell, huh? Anyway, let's take a look at this plate here. And the car comes with a photo-etched plate saying Ford Gran Torino 1972 Limited Edition Premium X Models Diecast. Uh, then it says PRD 153. Not sure what that is. But let's get this car out of the box. Torinos were made from 68 to 76, originally starting out as a high-end trim level for the Ford Fairlane. Just like the Chevy Caprice started out as a trim level of the Impala, but then became a separate car. The Torino, however, replaced the Fairlane by 1970 and can therefore be called its successor. Torinos were pretty popular NASCARs at the time. The 1972 is not my favorite Torino but it's the most unique looking one, and that's the reason why I bought it. And also because of the price. I found this for 22 euros and free shipping from a Hong Kong eBay seller. And usually these 143 Premium X cars go for almost double that, plus shipping. So yeah, scored me a nice deal there. The other reason why I bought the 72 Gran Torino is, you might have guessed it, because of the Clint Eastwood movie going by the same name. It's a really interesting film you need to watch that deals with the concept of older people having a hard time adapting to the change coming to their neighborhoods via immigration, and how sometimes their prejudices end up being valid, but also at the end that there's good people in every community. But yeah, that was a badass car and central object of desire in the movie. And I have it now, sitting right here in front of me, looking good. 
Would have loved to have it in black though, but the only other color option by Premium X was red, but I believe that there's also a green one. Another reason why I bought this in 143 scale is because while they make Torinos in bigger scales, they don't make the 72 Torino in 118 scale. Maisto has made the 69 Torino Talladega, which is actually a pretty rare and expensive Maisto. Auto World has made two versions of the 70 Torino, one with height of a headlights and one without. And Greenlight has made the 76 Torino, mostly known from Starsky and Hutch, in 118, 124, and 143rd scale. But because I didn't watch that show, I don't really like the red paint scheme, and I'm waiting for a black one. Currently, the only black one I know of is the one made by Mini Champs in 143. But returning to the 1972 Torino, which is the subject of this review, Neo models also make it. And that one comes with the badging on the grille. It's also got no pegs on the headlights, which might be super important to some people. And it's got Magnum 500s. But it's also like thrice the price of this one. And unlike the Premium X, the Neo version does not have any window glass at all, while this model comes with fully raised windows on both sides. So you win some, you lose some, depending on which manufacturer you want to get the 72 Torino from. But I'm happy with this one. So, looking at the front of the 1972 Ford Grand Torino Sport, love it or hate it, it's a badass gangster looking grill, which reminds me of the Chrysler 300C Hemi, which I've also reviewed on my channel. I think these two would be perfect villain cars in movies, just because of how scary they look up front. Here at the front is also where you can easily tell this is a Gran Torino, because Gran Torinos had chrome bezels surrounding the headlamps on each side of the grille, while regular Torinos had a full-width grille that surrounded the headlights as well. And looking at the headlights themselves, I mean, yeah, every single one of them has a big peg, but it kind of fits to this old 1970s style, although of course the real car doesn't have these. The grille itself is also done in a pretty nice fashion. I mean, you've got all these horizontal and vertical slats or bars, and they're painted well. And on top of them, we have three dimensional photo etched Ford lettering, although the F is a little bit slanted. But I mean, it is a 143 scale car, so it's not really noticeable. And it's not like they put it upside down or anything. This car comes with a New York license plate, which is pretty good. And below the headlights you can also see that we have orange indicators. These are separate pieces instead of just being painted orange, so that's good. But of course, on the downside, they do have pegs as well. These hood scoops up here represent what was called the Ram Air induction system. Now, of course, this is a sealed 143 scale diecast car, but I'm still going to tell you a little bit about the engine, because. This car came with a 5.8 liter 351 Cobra Jet V8 engine with 248 brake horsepower at 5,400 RPM. And the way you can tell there's a 351 Cobra Jet inside without opening the hood is because of the dual exhausts at the back. The top speed of the 72 Gran Torino was 226 kilometers per hour with 0 to 100 acceleration in just over 7 seconds. And here's the typical muzzle car side profile of the 72 Torino. You can see that it is a fastback because the roof slopes down all the way to the back of the car in one single slope. Over here you've got Gran Torino Sport written in three-dimensional photo etched lettering, which is really nice attention to detail for such a small scale car. And notice how this car has no vent glass. This is all one giant window. And notice how the chrome trim above the window goes around it, but stops right here. And that's because it's like that on the real car as well. When these doors open, they are frameless, and so we don't have B pillars on this car either. And here's a look at the car's small mirrors. Taking a closer look at the wheels, 
These are supposed to represent 14-inch wheels, and I believe these are factory rims. But oftentimes the owners would put Magnum 500s on these cars instead. You can see we have white walls on the tires, and the Torino logo on the rims. And what I also like is that on this relatively tiny 143 scale car, they actually made the indicator from a separate piece, and it doesn't have any peg either, which is great. Let's move on to the rest of the car. So here we are at the fastback tail end of the 72 Gran Torino, and you can see that right here we have, again, a photo-etched Torino logo at the back. And over here, it's supposed to say Gran Torino, although I think that the G is a little bit misplaced. But again, it's pretty hard to get these letters right on such a small scale. Down here we have the New York license plate again. The two exhausts I was talking about earlier. We have this huge chrome rear bumper. And regarding the taillights, um, they are separate pieces, although they do have pegs. And you have the taillight, and then I think you have the brake light as a separate piece as well. Pretty interesting. Let's check out the interior. So this is about as sharp as I can get it. And um, you can see that there are some details on the interior. Most notably, you can see the gear shift in the middle. That's because this is supposed to represent a four-speed manual. And we also have some details on the dashboard. Got some wood veneer and a little bit of detail around the glove compartment. And taking a look at the seats, you can see that they do have a pattern on them. And they're kept in beige, which makes them visible. And regarding the back seats, this is a 2 plus 2 muscle car, so you got two seats in the back, and you can theoretically fit five passengers in here. But of course the car is meant to be enjoyed for two people. Let's check out the driver's side. I think the best way to see this is with the flash. You can see that we have a 70s style steering wheel. Gauge cluster at the back, although it's just a sticker. And here's another look at the seats. Back there we even have a window crank. Not a whole lot of detail, but still something. And taking a look at the bottom of the car, you can see that we have like this dual exhaust system, painted in silver. Got a gas tank back here. It says Premium X. Other than that, a few more details, but not a whole lot to see, except the limited slip differential. Guys, thanks again for checking out the review of this 143 scale Ford Gran Torino Sport by Premium X. If you're interested in more 143 scale cars that I've reviewed in the past, you'll find some of them here. And I'll see you in the next video. This is Imperial Diecast, signing out.